Hello, and welcome back to The Power of Meditation. I'm here with Dr. Claire Johnson. Hi, Dr. Claire. Hi, Kelly. Thank you so much for inviting me. I'm really excited to talk to you about The Power of Meditation. Oh, me too. I'm just thrilled to get to talk with you. So your work has principally been in lucid dreaming. And let me just share a little bit for those that don't know you. So Dr. Claire Johnson is a global lucidity teacher and pioneer in the field. She was the first person in the world to earn a PhD in lucid dreaming as a creative tool. Past president and CEO of the International Association for the Study of Dreams, she has written seven dream books, including The Art of Lucid Dreaming, a prolific uh, lucid dreamer for over 40 years. Claire is also a novelist and a prize-winning short story writer. As the founder of Deep Lucid Dreaming video courses, she creates guided meditations and blissful yoga nidra journeys to open up the magical world of dreams. Claire leads ocean retreats to explore consciousness and spiritual evolution. And her website is www.deeplucidreaming.com. So let's begin this conversation today um, uh, just focusing for a moment on the kind of parallels overlaps between meditative states, yoga nidra, which is your free gift, by the way, for anyone who's interested, there's a wonderful yoga nidra course that Dr. Claire will be providing for us. You'll see that in your email, uh, but talking about the parallels and overlaps between meditation, lucid dreaming and yoga nidra. Right. Yeah. Great question. So in lucid dreams, we are physiologically asleep, but we're consciously aware within the dream state. So this has a really clear overlap with yoga nidra, which is when we lie down, relax and float on the very edge of sleep. And often in yoga nidra, we'll start to see images, you know, we all see or feel these um, pre sleep images or sensations, it's known as hypnagogia, but most of us um, kind of just fall straight to sleep from there. But if you would like to go directly into a lucid dream from the waking state, you can do this by allowing your physical body to basically fall asleep in yoga nidra, but by re retaining your conscious awareness, and then you can just drift into a lucid dream. You'll feel the dream scenes building up around you. It's a, a magical sensation. Mm -hmm. And then with that full conscious awareness, you'll suddenly find yourself within the dream state. Uh, and it's a wonderful feeling. It's like everything, all the images, the people, the colors seem to be imbued with conscious awareness. Mm. And in that state, we can either go with the flow of the dream. So lucid dreaming doesn't have to be all about control, which is what some people seem to think, but that's wrong. Um, it can, or you can also simply go with whatever's happening. Uh, or you could decide to um, sit down and meditate. For example, I have meditated in lucid dreams before. And I discuss in my, my big book, my biggest book, Llewellyn's complete book of lucid dreaming, how I found that meditating in a lucid dream is the fastest path to non-dual experiences, to um, an, an, a sense of cosmic awareness where you yourself, your little ego self just dissolves, your dream body dissolves, and you find yourself um, bathed in beautiful light uh, or floating in what feels like infinite space. So lucid dreaming and meditation and yoga nidra are all inextricably bound together. And of course, yoga nidra is uh, probably the most ancient form of meditation. Um, you know, it's an ancient tantric practice and the first written mention of yoga nidra appeared in the ancient Indian texts, the Upanishads, around uh, one and a half thousand years ago. And it's a way to connect with our unconscious mind, so that brings us closer to the dream state, but it's also a way to connect with the infinite and explore our deepest potential. So it's just a fabulous, um, a fabulous state of consciousness to explore and uh, it can help us as well to have more lucid dreams when we practice this beautiful yoga nidra meditation um, because when we when we go on guided journeys and this is what i do i create 
basically guided lucid dream journeys. So I bring um, the participant into a state of deep relaxation and I lead them on a journey where they realize that they're dreaming and they explore various things. Um, and that's a practice for lucid dreaming because it helps us to remain conscious um, and yet be so relaxed that our body uh, is basically asleep. And you can have amazing adventures, you can heal yourself, it's a very healing state of consciousness. Um, you yeah. Can also, yeah, it helps with insomnia and anxiety, depression. I mean, I've had students who have had severe anxiety, and once they began to make yoga nidra part of their daily practice, they said it transformed their lives. It, mm. it's, transformative and yet the good news is it's the easiest form of meditation ever that's right yeah <laughs> it's right. nice that's <laughs> oh, lovely yeah I'm I was so pleased when you agreed to be part of the summit you know I have a very profound I've have had profound experiences with lucid dreaming but it's it's all kind of dated because it was kind of in my 20s when I was into it mm -hmm. I was in a Sufi based lucid dreaming group and my experience there was that there were particular um, moments within those lucid dreams where certain imagery dropped in like certain experiences occurred that really did sort of uh, shift my self-understanding in a really profound way and I can still kind of pull them up in not just in my my visual memory, but kind of, you know, the somatic experience and what arose in my body mind is still present for me. And so I've really had a, you know, very potent experience of the healing and awakening capacity of, of lucid dreaming. And I was just wondering if you could talk to us a little bit about um, kind of the methodology, if there is one of uh, ensuring that the potent, valuable states of lucid dreaming kind of uh, populate your your waking consciousness oh yeah i mean often it simply happens that population of of waking consciousness without us needing to do anything else because it can be so profoundly transformative what happens uh in that lucid dream state um people heal trauma sometimes in in lucid dreams in the space of about you know five minutes they can wake up feeling completely different this happened uh to me once when uh when my little girl was um she was about four weeks old and uh, she turned blue and stopped breathing and uh, we had to obviously try to resuscitate her we thank thank goodness we managed to uh, resuscitate her and get her back but after that as you can imagine as a new mother i was really worried about her whenever she was awake it was all great and then as soon as she went to sleep i would be anxiously watching her little belly to make sure that it was going to go up and down you know that she was still still breathing um, and that really affected my sleep i started to get these really horrendous nightmares and in the nightmares i would find a dead baby in a cot and i would grab it and and, and i start sort of screaming in agony and and so on and of course i know all about lucid dreaming i've been doing it for so long um but at that time, you know how it is when you're sleep deprived, when you've had a baby, I was just um, kind of dropping off the edge into this black abyss of sleep, just trying to catch up with my, uh, with my body. And so I had that nightmare several times before I decided, okay, you know, that's enough. And I said to myself, I set the intention, the next time I have this recurring nightmare, I'm going to realize that I'm dreaming. And I didn't set any intention beyond that. It was simply to, to wake up in that dream. And um, I had it again. And as I was standing there screaming in the nightmare with this, this dead baby, it just went click. And I was like, oh, I'm dreaming right now. Okay, mm -hmm. this is a dream. And then fully lucid, I looked at the, this baby. It didn't look anything like a baby. It was like this sort of shoddy plastic doll. And I was like, how could I have been fooled by that? This is just crazy. And I looked at it and I said, I refuse to have this kind of imagery in my dreams anymore. I am lucid and I know my baby is alive. And I said that with great power, threw this doll on the floor and it dissolved into the floorboards. And then all my emotion dissolved as well. And all of a sudden I was bathed in this rainbow light and mm. it had the feeling like yoga, you know, like pranic energy, going all the way through my dream body. And I felt that I was just really connected with my dreaming mind and that everything 
was good and I had affirmed my knowledge and my understanding that, that my baby was fine. She was alive. It was all going to be fine. Uh, and I woke up and as you said earlier with the somatic experience, I woke up, I was still buzzing with that rainbow yoga energy. It was just incredible all the way through my body. Um, and from that day on, the nightmares never returned. And I, I had this trust. I felt more trusting. I was no longer thinking all the time, what if she dies? What if this happens? I, yeah. I kind of knew that things would be okay. It, it felt like I'd kind of, I don't know, like I'd shifted something on a really, really deep level. Yeah. And if you, I mean, it's just incredible how that healing can just come into your life. So I didn't need to do anything else to make yeah. that happen. It mm. had happened, that change had taken place. Um, it was a huge psychological transformation. It was a healing of the trauma um, of, of that time. Uh, and yeah, suddenly everything flowed better. And, uh, and, and she's, you know, she's fine. <laughs> she's like, <laughs> I'm a 13 year old now. And <laughs> How old is she? 13. 13. Yeah. Wow, that's great. I have a 10 and a 12 year old. Um, so I'm curious, actually, I've had a lucid dream at one point where uh, there was a rainbow river and something kind of profound happened. There was, you know, I, there was a, a person with whom I'd had some tension and there was very healing engagement in the dream. And then that person stepped into the rainbow river and became part of the rainbow river. And it just, it gave me from that point forward, a sense of like really profound trust in that person and also in certain elements of what had been going on. Anyway, um, you know, I have a lot of kind of anchors around what rainbows mean, just because in the Vajrayana, you know, in mandala practice, there's like a lot of relating to rainbows. And I just wonder, even though it sounds like to some listeners, this might sound like so woo woo, but hopefully we're, hopefully we're in good company here amongst the people that are open minds to this sort of thing. But I'm just curious if, if you have any sort of recurring experience of rainbows or if like the, you know, the whole wisdom light experience arises in your dreams or in other people's lucid dreams very often yes light is a fundamental part of my spiritual practice within my lucid dreams i have had many other experiences with rainbow light um i'm, I'm also a yoga instructor by the way so i'm very used to uh, experiencing the flow of prana through the body and often that helps me to become lucid in my dreams when i i feel the pranic flow and or i feel like this chakra energy spinning and and then i realize oh i'm dreaming right now mm -hmm. and there's very often and, um, this sense of dissolving into light. I call it the lucid light. Um, it can be light of any color. It could be rainbow colored. Uh, it's often golden light. It can also be black light. Um, so it doesn't matter. Uh, it, it's totally individual. But many people experience um, this lucid light um, and it takes them into a state of enlightenment, of bliss, uh, a state of oneness, which is so precious because you return from that experience feeling utterly refreshed, feeling as if you've plugged into the source, um, mm -hmm. understanding that we are all one, that we're mm -hmm. not separate and, and everyone's just doing their best in life. You know, of course there are conflicts, but um, when it comes down to it, we're all made of, of this light. Um, that's the experience that I've had. I've been doing this for pretty much all my life and uh, teaching it for well over 20 years. Um, and it's just, it's just really amazing to, to feel that deep sense of oneness and presence um, in the lucid dream state or in any state of consciousness. The lucid light is always present, always. Mm. It's here right now with us. Mm -hmm. um, it is easier to access it in states of meditation or yoga nidra or lucid dreaming because then we release uh, the part of our mind which is constantly racing around with all these thoughts, assessing things, worrying about uh, the future or the past or whatever it is. You know, we, we go off in all directions. So in a different um, state of consciousness where we allow our minds to slow down, through mm -hmm. relaxing the body, through breathing and meditation, um, or simply because we're in the dream state where all that's happened because our body is physiologically asleep, then we, we really have um, this openness 
to, to the light. So I, I always say to my students, in any dream, if you would like to have one of these spiritual experiences, go towards the light. It might be a moon or it might be um, water on a pond shining in your dream, uh, or it could be an actual light in the dream. Uh, it's good to move towards that light, just openly, not expecting anything, and just and just see what happens for you. Mm. Uh, and it can be transformative. As, yeah. As oh, absolutely. I think it's so interesting because, you know, I don't know a ton about what happens during dreaming and sleep in general, but I have heard, and I'm sure a lot of people have heard that it is a time when you consolidate memories. And obviously we've heard about, you know, people that have trauma and PTSD will, will tend to replay those unresolved traumas, those undigested experiences and have nightmares. So just to be able to infuse that time with light and with spaciousness and consolidate memories in a different sort of a way with an awareness of the light that underlies the um, more visible expression of, yeah. of our experience is so incredible. I wanted to ask you a little bit of a question about um, creativity. So you have all these books behind you. You've written a bunch of them. I'm kind of imagining that like the ones that are turned toward us, so many of those are probably your books. Yeah, in different translations. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And, um, you know, I have a really strong relationship with creative work and yet like also lots of resistance around like trying to publish anything or anything like that. Mm. So I'm, this was a, this is a very personally motivated question. <laughs> I'm just wondering if in your experience, there's been anything in particular about the way that you're approaching your practice or your lucid dreaming practice that's helped you to clear blocks around, you know, producing creative work, publishing creative work, that sort of thing. <laughs> Absolutely. Um, we can change so much. We can change so much uh, when we do dream work, uh, when we become lucid in dreams or in the yoga nidra state by setting an intention. Um, mm -hmm. So that's an, another thing we can maybe come back to that later. It's a super powerful brain state for setting intentions. Um, but one lucid dream I had, um, this was many years ago, and uh, I've never been someone who's particularly great at like at drawing, um, you know, so I was like, I, I, I'm very creative, and I am very artistic in many ways, but I can't really do the drawing. <laughs> and so in one lucid dream, um, I was, uh, I was sitting down, I wasn't lucid yet. So I was sitting down, and I was trying to draw something, I was trying to draw sort of a Buddha statue, I was trying to copy it down. And there was this really annoying woman in the doorway who was watching me very critically. And I, in the dream, I was just like, Oh, where she go away, where she go away. And then I suddenly became lucid in the dream, and understood that this critical person perhaps represented a part of me, or a voice from my past who had said, Oh, no, you know, you can't, you're not good at art. And so I thought, okay, I'm going to keep sketching this Buddha. I'm going to do an amazing sketch in this lucid dream. I'm not going to bother about that critical woman. Forget about her. And so I did that in the dream. And it was incredible because when I woke up from that lucid dream, I became much braver mm. with my artistic creativity. I was already doing all the writing stuff. You know, writing has always flowed from me. Uh -huh. But I started to make collages, lucid dream collages, because I realized, hey, it doesn't have to just be how, you know, how well can you draw? Can you copy something down exactly? I mean, I could do so much more. So I started to create these collages. Um, and, and that was a turning point for me. Uh, and I had them exhibited uh, in the US at one point, And it was just like, I can do this. Um, so I think, my advice would be imagine yourself publishing uh, or doing whatever uh, creative form you would like to do. And the next time you do a yoga nidra meditation, you can set what is known as a sankalpa. This is a, a strong intention or resolve. And it's very powerful because it speaks directly to the unconscious mind. It's like dropping a pebble into a still pool. So all these ripples go out to the unconscious mind. Um, and that's where all these deep processes uh, take place, such as healing, learning, memory consolidation, uh, integration of trauma. So we're totally in that space and we can actually drop this beautiful intention into that space. Very good idea to keep it super simple in terms of the wording, right? Mm -hmm. Very, very simple, no negative statements, only positive, such as um, I am endlessly creative, right? Something like that. 
and always have an image to go with it because our unconscious mind understands the language of imagery much better than it does the language of words, right? So uh, you can just drop that intention in and then once you've seen it and felt it, you let it go. You mm. don't think about it anymore. You just go in your lovely lucid journey uh, in the yoga nidra um, and it's done, it's set. And you can reset that every now and again if you want to. But the important thing is just to really feel like it's already happened. The universe is taking care of it. Yeah, it's already done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, that's awesome. Another thing that I read when I was kind of studying, you uh, studying you before this interview is that you've worked with uh, children and nightmares. And I wonder if we could talk about that a little bit. My child actually woke up this morning, having dreamt that he had basically sparred with our cat. I'm just curious, because she happens to have a wound right now. So it's kind of interesting. I think she was in a fight. It's all very like mysterious. But anyway, um, you know, it just occurred to me because it's not uncommon for him to have nightmares. And so yeah. I wonder if we could just talk about that a little bit, how, how lucid dreaming can, can help yeah, people with nightmares. Absolutely. Um, yeah, so uh, one of my books goes uh, into this. It's Sleep Monsters and Superheroes, um, mm-hmm. Empowering Children Through Creative Dream Play. Um, and one of, the, uh, one of the things that works really well for kids is if they have a nightmare, um, to draw the nightmare, mm-hmm. but draw help in the nightmare or draw a slightly different ending or make it funny you know uh-huh. uh, so a lot of kids will have dreams where they're being chased by something horrible um so you make that horrible thing look funny or you make sure you've got your great big friend who comes in the dream to protect you um, again this visual work is super important um because then the child sees it oh it's possible you know i can i can just fly away like superman or i can um i can make friends with this this monster so in terms as well of um, animals in dreams, it's always amazing when they show up. There's uh, cats, for example, they, so many of my students have said their cats help them to get lucid in their dreams. <laughs> um, they, they, they'll come into the dreams and remind them uh, that this, this is a dream. Uh, if there's some sort of conflict going on in a nightmare, uh, it's, worth, it's just worth asking the child, how did you feel when you were sparring with the cat? Does this remind you? of any situation in your waking life. So that's called just making a bridge um, and see what the child answers, because it may be about a situation in their waking life. Mm -hmm. Um, Having said that, you said that your cat may have been in a fight. So perhaps, you know, perhaps your son was aware of that and was thinking, oh, you know, it kind of went into his consciousness and then he kind of played it out in the dream. Mm -hmm. Because in dreams, that's how we assimilate our experiences. Uh, everything that goes on during the day, the conversations we have, the emotions we feel, the upsets, the happy moments, it all comes threading into our dreams and they kind of, they present it uh, as if on a stage uh, just for us, which is wonderful. Yeah. (laughs) But with nightmares, I always say that nightmares um, are often healing gifts. Um, One of my books is the, The Art of Transforming Nightmares and it gives loads of practical tips how to deal with nightmares because it's a real thing a lot of people actually end up having anxiety dreams uh, or nightmares and it can really destroy your sleep it can destroy your self-esteem if you get recurring nightmares um so yes one of the the best things to do is to to be brave enough just to to work with that dream while understanding that nightmares have this incredibly powerful energy mm. so if we can figure out why the nightmare came uh, we can harness that energy, uh, yeah. we can transform things, we can, um, it, it will show us often an honest mirror of what is taking place within us at that point in our lives. So super interesting. <laughs> where yeah, can- it's just fascinating. I love that you've um, reinforced this idea that imagery is really important. Um, you know, one of the the interesting learnings when I was becoming a therapist, um, I had to study for this exam, you know, licensing exam. And it so happened that when I was in grad school, I was like, you know, also having babies and like very overworked and kind of like, you know, working working and going through grad school and having babies. And so I sort of just like decided that it would be okay to not read every single textbook. So then I get around to certification exams and 
studying was like, it was just a brand new experience. And so having to remember everything when I was recently, when I was postpartum um, and kind of lay down all those memories was tough. And so I read this book about, um, it's called Moonwalking with Einstein. It's actually hilarious. It's an incredible book. It's about memory champions and the way that they kind of not trick themselves, but the the strategies that they use to help the brain to consolidate memories. And it's so often about imagery. So I created all these like little memory palaces that were pertinent to each of the things that I needed to learn. So I think it's just like, it's, it's so important. Like it cannot be overstated how much imagery is important and what we kind of bring back from our dreams at the, like at the, at the level of imagery is so critical. That's true. Imagery and also the somatic experience, as you mentioned earlier, how do I feel in my body? How did I feel in my body in that dream? Mm. And you can breathe into that feeling, uh, you know, especially with young children, this often works quite well. You know, mm. where did you feel scared? In my tummy. Okay, well, let's breathe into the belly and uh, let's imagine some some light coming in there. Well, how do you feel now? And you can really guide them through it because um, with very young kids, obviously it's very hard for them to completely share what it is that they've been through in the dream state. Um, yeah, and, and also the, yeah, that emotional sense um, of the dream is often super strong. I mean, take nightmares, for example, it can feel like a life and death situation and, and you can wake up bathed in sweat in yeah. a complete panic, your heart's going crazy and, yeah. and it takes you a while to just calm down. So it's very, very useful for everybody to, to learn basic breathing techniques, which is why meditation is so fabulous as well, you know, because it teaches us to slow down, to breathe and to get centered within our body um, and allow our mind just to, just to slow down for a while. Mm -hmm. It's very, very good because when we have that skill, that comes into the dream state as well. Once we know how to meditate, just a little bit in waking life, and you can make meditation fun for kids as well. Um, it, it just really helps. It teaches us this automatic response in the dream state and, of course, in waking life. If something scary or upsetting happens, first response, you breathe. You breathe from the belly, and yeah. it can really transform so much. Oh, it's so incredible. Yeah, you know, I have a, a longtime yoga student who... I've worked with him for a very long time and he's now experiencing Lewy body dementia, which is a particular kind of dementia where, um, well, there's certain defining characteristics I don't need to go into, but one of the features of Lewy body dementia is extremely vivid dreams and also what they call acting out dreams, which basically just means that like if you're running in the dream, the legs run. So you're very, very mobile in your, while you're sleeping, which is pretty dangerous because, you know, lots yeah. of like sleepwalking or getting out, trying to get out of bed when you're not able to walk on your own, whatever. So it's interesting to me because, you know, I think a lot of us feel like, you know, we're, we're cognitively capable. We can discern between what's real and not real. You know, we know it was just a dream and it's not reality, but the truth is like, you know, I'm thinking of that loud Sue poem. You know, I, last night I dreamt I was a butterfly. I think it's lots of, you know, it's, it's off. It is a bit vague whether, you know, a dream is reality or to what degree, like our actual reality is influenced by what's happening in dream state. And so and what you just said, like what's important is to create that experience of anchoring into light and into, you know, your essential nature, whether you're dreaming or awake, it's just as, a, it's just as essential. Yeah, it gives you more resilience yeah. um, through things. And that's not to say that we're going to be ignoring uh, the shadow elements of our dreams. I mean, nightmare work is, um, as I said earlier, you need courage to do it. Mm -hmm. But just having that ability to slow down, calm down, connect with your breath, connect with light, um, understand your presence uh, in the cosmos, uh, um, it just helps for sure. Yeah. And yes, you know, when we're dreaming, most of the time, if we're not lucid, we believe that the dream is reality. Okay. You know, yeah. we believe it's completely 100%. Um, and so we wake up from our dreams and we're like, you know, how could I have not become lucid in that dream? You know, there's that, you know, this monster came right into my house. Well, when was the last time a monster came right into my house? And um, I've never seen a monster like that. Why didn't I become lucid? <laughs> um, mm -hmm. So it's basically, but lucidity is a skill that you can learn so that when surprising things happen, you do a reality check. You ask quickly, okay, hang on, could this be a dream? Let's see. You know, you can do a reality check, see if you can get your finger through your the palm of your hand. If you can, then you're dreaming. Or one of my favorite is to 
to just jump in the air and see if you float because of course in the dream body you're very light and gravity mm. is the same in the dream world um or you can pinch your nose closed and try and breathe through it okay if we do that now with our mouth closed we can't breathe anymore if you do it in the dream you you still can of course because you're not blocking your physical nostrils so there are basically all these little reality checks but one of the the wonderful things about lucid dreaming is it helps us to have a larger understanding of life itself as um, as a waking dream <laughs> and when we understand how our thoughts feelings beliefs emotions expectations affect the lucid dream that we're in because it's a thought responsive environment we understand more how the whole of waking reality is also a thought responsive environment it's kind of slower to respond because we're part of this huge collective dream right but still that is why when we talked about creativity earlier it's so important if you have an intention to set that intention in a in a wonderful sort of hybrid state of consciousness like yoga nidra uh, and see that image really strongly and really believe, okay, it's already happened. Mm. It's powerful. Mm. You send out that powerful intention, it ripples into your life and things will almost magically begin to change. Mm. That's beautiful. I love also that you just gave us these practical tips for kind of um, realizing if you're dreaming or not. And the way that I understood that is that um, you can do that during the day in your waking state as well to kind of realize that you're in a waking state is that true or is that is that my extrapolation you can do it during the waking state um to understand also to kind of focus your conscious awareness during the day so you're not just sleepwalking through your life you're saying what state of consciousness am i in and you'll see the way that everything becomes clearer you get more mental clarity but also that's a training as well to have more lucid dreams because the more often you do reality checks and examine your state of consciousness in the waking state the more likely you are to do that in the dream state and to realize that you are in fact dreaming right now so. yeah that's that's actually the one technique that i remember from when i was in my 20s and in this lucid dream group was every time you look at the clock like look at the clock okay it's 10 41 and i'm awake so just training the mind to be check just as you've said checking to see what state of consciousness one is in it's so simple but then once you then at some point it was taught and this is what happened for me so at some point you'll be in a dream you'll look at the clock and you'll notice you know it's 10 41 <laughs> and i am i'm dreaming but i'm lucid aware that i'm dreaming that's right yeah yeah so very cool yeah you can connect it also with things like every time i walk through a door today i'm going to ask right. Am I dreaming? So it's not just connected with one thing, but things you also do in your dreams. Or um, if you live by the ocean before you go to bed, you say, the next time I see the ocean, I will know that I am dreaming, right? Because you're about uh -huh. to go to sleep. Uh -huh. um, any kind of things like that, it's good to personalize it because then it's meaningful for you and it's fun. You know, it turns into a kind of game, consciousness. Yeah, yeah <laughs> I love it. So I want to let people know about uh, other ways that they can work with you. I know we have this free gift that's on your website, which is deepluciddreaming.com, if I'm not mistaken. And um, the Yoga Nidra. Yeah, that's, yeah, that's a 50% off uh, discount. Yeah. Okay, great. So that Yoga Nidra course, is you get a 50% discount as your free gift. Um, so we'll, we'll send a code or what have you. Um, and then there's other stuff that you are, that's coming down the, the pipe for you. So do you want to tell us about other opportunities that people may want to? Ooh, oh, thank you. Well, one thing I'm, I'm, I'm going to launch now. So by the time, you know, the summit's on, it will be out is that any, uh, subscribers to my deep lucid dreaming website will get access to, um, a 10 day lucid dreaming course for just $5. Okay. Um, so that's one nice thing that I'm offering. Um, and they'll also get uh, around 25 to 30% discounts on various other courses. Um, yeah, and um, apart from that, I've also just been creating a really beautiful, big spiritual portals into lucid dreaming course. Uh, and that's gonna come out uh, early February, I think. Um, so that was part of a live class, which I then converted into um, a professionally produced video and audio course. And I have an amazing musician and he's creating sound baths for all of the yoga nidra uh, visualizations within that course. So 
Yeah. <laughs> so beautiful. Wow. Well, that's exciting. I think I'll be I'll be seeing you inside one of your courses at some point. Oh, yeah. I appreciate you so much. So any final tips or words of wisdom you want to convey to our listeners before we go? Yeah, I just think that um, one really important thing to remember is how marvelous and um, revitalizing the state of sleep is, mm. right? Um, and we tend to push sleep out of our lives and we're like, I don't have time and I'll just get up earlier to finish that project. But sleep is just a fantastic, wonderful thing. It connects us with our dreams, which are incredibly soulful. It uh, inspires our lucid dreams and we can optimize our sleep as well within these yoga nidra states. Um, and just so that it becomes like this amazing overnight therapy to go to sleep. You know, it's not just something like, oh, I'm so tired. I'm just going to have to go to bed and we're all stressed. No, let's make this beautiful. It's wonderful. It's a third of our lives that we sleep. So if we bring meditation style practices into our nighttime routine, meditate before bed or do a yoga nidra in the night or in the early morning, um, we just expand the beauty and bliss of our life experience uh, while also evolving spiritually. So it's a wonderful thing. Yeah. Beautiful. Thank you so much. Very inspiring. Thank you so much, Kelly. It's lovely to speak to you. All right. Take good care. Be well. <laughs>